Hi, welcome to this week's dynamic practice. It's called putting on the brakes. It is a slower flow, so we will be doing some movement practices with emphasis on slowing it down and really work on stability within the movement. So it's a fair amount of range of motion exercises. Uh, of course, we'll be uh, stretching to increase our general range of motion for today, but also to activate those practices and uh, move slowly and with, with stability. Um, so for today, please have a block and a strap at the ready. Uh, let's begin. Feel free to lie down on your back. Let's lie face up. And let's start hands underneath the head. Feet flat on the floor, knees are bent. And as you inhale, you're gonna take your elbows and knees out to the sides and down. Activate your, both your elbows and knees toward the floor or into the floor. That's your in-breath. And then as you exhale, bring your elbows and knees close together, and if they touch, that's fine. If not, that's fine. Let's go back and forth like this a few times, breathing in and out through nose, uh, if available. Otherwise, in and out through mouth. So as you inhale, elbows and knees wide, like two pairs of butterfly wings opening. Exhale, elbows and knees come together, like two pairs of butterfly wings closing. Do this another few times here. And once you have synced these movements up with your breath, I'd like you to add an arch of your spine in addition to the, move, the other moves. So inhale, also arch your spine, breathe into the navel, and then as you exhale, press your low back into the floor, which means your tailbone will sweep forward. Go back and forth like this a few times. Inhale, extension of lumbar spine. Exhale, press your low back into the floor. And do this another few times. And one last time here, breathe in. Big exhale. All right. And from there, feet stay flat on the floor. Our arms will go out to either side in a wingspan. And we'll start with the palms facing up. We'll call that, we'll call that neutral. And as you inhale, you're going to you're going to externally rotate your arms. So you draw your shoulders away from your ears, and from palms up. The, the arms twist, the arms rotate so that the palms turn behind you and toward the floor, like you're trying to palm the floor the more difficult way. That's your in-breath. And then as you exhale, you're gonna internally rotate the arms. That's taking your palms forward and down. And, and sometimes people are able to lift their pinky fingers up. So that's, if you have that range of motion, that might be another cue for you. So you're going back and forth like this. Inhale as you arch. Uh, as you arch your spine as well, we're going to add the extension, deep breath in, external rotation of arms. Exhale, there's internal rotation of arms. And you go back and forth like this. And this is another symmetric practice. You get a chance to, to, to learn about shoulders. There might be some different range of motion in this movement. with both shoulder flexibility and stability today. So this is a good way to tap into shoulder blades, shoulder joints, and the, and the movements of your arm lines. So in addition to this, another few times as you inhale, you arch your back, tip of tailbone into the floor, and as you exhale, tailbone forward, you can press your low back into the ground. Back and forth like that, another time or two here. Okay. Great. And you come back to a neutral position. You pause here for a moment. Notice how your shoulder blades feel after that. Uh, and, and the arm lines all the way down from shoulder uh, to wrist. And from here, you're gonna take just the right arm out to the right, you can place your left arm uh, wherever you'd like, but your right arm's out to the right, palm facing up. 
And from here, please take your left thigh on top of right thigh. And this is going to be where we're going to add a twist into uh, to external rotation of your arm. So as you inhale, turn your head to the right. You can look at your arm. And you're going to externally rotate your arm. Try to palm the floor the more difficult way. That's your in-breath. And then as you exhale, you come back to center. Do the same side several times. Deep breath in. Draw your shoulder blade in. You can look to the right. Right arm in external rotation. And then as you exhale, head back where you started, arm back where you started. Now as you turn your head to the right and rotate your arm, also now add drop in your knees to the left. So now this is a full twist in the spine. That's your inhale, exhale, return to where you started, and repeat this same move several times. As you look to the right, your knees drop to the left. So we're starting to warm up the spine in the realm of twists. So you can feel the, feel the twisting action of your spine. You can also arch your lumbar spine at the top of this move. So you squeeze the muscles in your low back. Exhale, you come back to center. And repeat this another few times, breathing in and out through the nose if you can. And one last time here, take a deep breath in. Okay, great. And then return to center, unlace your legs, place both feet on the floor for a moment. And notice the after effects from that first twist. Take a deep breath or two here. And you don't have to, but I'm gonna change orientations for demonstration purposes. But notice your right side for one more deep inhale and exhale. Okay, great. And then from here, please take your left arm out to the left, palm faces up. And uh, for now, also take your right thigh on top of left thigh. But we'll leave the, uh, your legs there for now. And let's get the upper body synced up with your breath first. As you inhale, turn your head to the left. You can look at your left arm. As you uh, turn your head to the left, you're going to rotate your left arm in an external rotation. That can also include draw shoulder blades away from ear left shoulder blade away from ear. That's your in-breath. And then exhale, return back to a neutral position where you started. And repeat this several times. Head turns to the left. Left arm externally rotates like you're trying to palm the floor the more difficult way. As you exhale, you come back to center. And of course, this might feel different from the first side. So notice uh, similarities, of course, but also notice differences. In terms of the movement of both neck and shoulder, shoulder blade and shoulder joint. And from here, you can also drop your knees opposite head. So your knees are going to drop to the right as your head turns to the left, affecting a twist here, so counter-rotating, hips opposite head. And as you, as you breathe and look to the left, knees drop to right, notice the twist and the stretch along the torso. This side might have a different set of experiences. Might be tighter, might be more open in places. At the top of uh, your inhale, you can also add an extension of your lumbar spine. So as you go into the twist, you can squeeze the muscles in the low back, the erectors, the multiphity, squeeze the muscles of your lumbar spine, and then exhale Return to center. Repeat this another few times. Okay. Very good. One last in inhale and exhale. And then when you come back to center, you can unlace your legs, feet flat on the floor. And notice the after effects uh, down your torso, on the left, left shoulder, maybe even left neck, uh, around the jawline, TMJ. All right, very nice. And then from here, please draw your knees into chest. So you're gonna give your good knees a, uh, give your knees a good hug, draw your knees in, the tailbone might lift up a little bit and that's fine. Breathe into abdomen, 
a few times here, in and out through nose, if available. This is option number one. Option number two, if you'd like, you can take hold of feet. Knees go a little wider, so you can bring them toward the floor in a happy baby pose. So this, this assumes uh, a more open uh, hamstring, so if, if this feels too intense, especially for this warm-up period, uh, go ahead and stick with a Vimuktasana, the knees drawn in. But uh, regardless of where you are, you can breathe into the low back. In and out through nose. And abdominal breath. Okay. And so you can keep your either your right knee into chest or keep your right leg in happy baby pose. And everyone can take their left foot flat to the floor. So left arm relaxes by your side. Left foot flat on the floor. You can stay here as you draw either your knee in or uh, to the chest or toward the floor uh, by your side ribs. You kind of stay here, or if you'd like to get a uh, to get more of a hip uh, hips going up further opposite directions, you're going to take your leg forward a little. This increases the distance between knees between thighs. If you're able to, you can extend your leg even further forward. And at some point, you can also press your heel out, so you slide your heel forward along the ground. Um, the the fullest expression of this looks like an upward facing lunge, which we'll be doing lunges today. So either knee into chest and the foot is on the floor, anywhere from, from there to happy baby pose on the right side, full extension of your left leg. So you press your heel out. And a few more breaths, breathe into lower abdomen. Another time or two here. Okay, great. And then from there, coming back into full knees into chest or happy baby pose. Pause there. Take a deep breath in the abdomen. And then either keep your left knee in the chest or keep your left leg in happy baby. And please take your, the sole of your right foot to the floor. You can stay here if this feels like a good warm up uh, for hips and across sacrum. You stay here as you breathe into lower abdomen. If it's available, you can take your foot a little further forward. That draws your, your femur bones in more opposite directions. If it feels sensible, you can also extend your leg fully, press your heel out. And, as you, and uh, especially if you're pressing heel out, uh, you'll notice the femur bones are going opposite directions. Breathe into the stretch around your hips, by which I mean breathe into lower abdomen. And there's a few times here. Breathe here. And if this does feel pretty intense, just make sure your eyes are relaxed, feel the weight of your teeth, feel the weight of your jaw. Neck is soft, face is soft. And one last time here, take a deep breath in. And please come back into knees into chest or full happy baby. We'll pause there. Two breaths. Take a big inhale. Big exhale. And one last time. Okay, great. And then from there, release your legs, feet to the floor, and let's come all the way up uh, to seated. All right, and uh, please find your block. And from seated, this is going to be a, a technique that we're going to use during our st uh, standing sequence as well. Um, the block can be any, any width. So there's like three widths of the block. This is narrow, medium, wide. Uh, you can choose any, any which one. But you're gonna take the hands to the sides of the block and you're gonna try to crush the block, squeeze the block. And so this activates your shoulders and your arms. Draw your shoulder blades away from your ears. Uh, keep on breathing, face is soft. And as you're squeezing the block tight, you're gonna lift it up overhead as far as you can. And let's do this on the count of five, let's say. So from here, you're gonna go one, two, squeeze the block all the way up as high as you can go. Three, four, five, and then you squeeze the block back down as well. One, two, so it's a slow flow with range of motion activation 
uh, two more times. So lift up, two, three, four, five. You come back down. Draw your elbows in a little bit. You might notice that one elbow goes out to the side more. Keep that one in. Four, five. And let's go up and down one more time. One, two, three, four, five. And come back down. Two, three, four, five. And release. Block out to the side. And with palms on thighs, take a couple shoulder blade circles and make the shoulder blades uh, trace the biggest circle on your upper back that you can. So rather than quick and, and small, take some time and scribe the biggest circle on your, the circles, two circles, on your upper back that you can. And after several circles in one direction, change the direction of the circles really get toward the end of the range of motion. And the slow movement will allow you both to expand your range of motion, but to also stabilize in those range of motion as well. All right. Very nice. From there, you can draw the shoulder blades into back. We're gonna come into a forearm plank. So, you know, from face down, forearms and knees on the floor. And the forearm plank can include the knees down. You press your hips toward the floor, draw your bottom ribs up, and then gauge your biceps, press your forearms down. So this is a forearm plank with knees on the floor. Uh, if, you're, if you're feeling comfortable with it, you can also curl your toes under, straighten legs, and there's forearm plank here. So breathe here a few times, face remains soft, take some slightly deeper inhales and exhales, since we're starting to, to really work on muscle strength training, muscle stability, work two more breaths here. Take a big inhale, big exhale, and one last time. Okay, great, you can take your knees down if they're up, come up to, come up out of forearm plank, and you're gonna lie on your side. My left arm is down, but I'm mirroring you. You can take your right forearm onto the floor. Right forearm to the floor. This is a forearm side plank. So you can look down your body. The hips tend to be back a little bit, so press your hips forward a little. And option number one is to bend your knees and lift up into a forearm plank like this. Shoulder blades away from here, bottom bicep engaged. That's option number one. Option number two, if you'd like to extend your legs and lift up into a forearm plank uh, with your feet on the floor. Of course, there's more weight being borne uh, through the shoulder and weight being borne through ankles, so make sure that feels okay. And we're gonna hold this in one of two ways for two more deep breaths. Take an inhale, exhale, and one last time. Okay, great, and then lower down, you can switch sides, uh, your left forearm to the floor, and you can look down, hips press forward. Since the hips are prone to go back a little, you can press your hips forward. Shoulder blade away from ear, keep your bicep engaged, and either A, you can lift your hips with your knees on the floor, so this is knee, uh, side plank with knees on the ground, or if you'd like, legs are extended, and you lift up into a, uh, option number two for side plank. So shoulder blade away from ear, either you press your, the side of your knee into the floor, or you press the outside of your foot into the floor. Hips are lifting up, and there's two more breaths here. Take a deep breath in. Take a big exhale. And one last time, breath in. Okay, great, and lower down from there. From here, uh, you come up to seated for, for a moment so that your feet are on the ground, and then you're gonna lean back forearms onto the floor. And option, and well, stage one, option number one, is you keep your legs down, keep your hips down, draw your shoulder blades into the back, biceps engaged, so like you're, so you're squeezing your biceps, and then you're drawing your shoulder blades in to lift your heart up. Now the head does not have to go back. I actually like looking a little forward, so there's not too much of a rush of blood to my head. So I look forward, but you can look straight up or back as long as your neck is okay with this. So this is option number one uh, for, the forearm, uh, for the forearm practice here. 
uh, working up toward tabletop. Option number two is you place your feet onto the floor, drive your feet into the floor, and lift your hips up. All right, so they don't have to come up far. As soon as your hips lift, your arms are now increasing their range of motion behind you. So your arms are going relative to your torso further and further back. So if you lift your hips up a millimeter, that's great. You're weight bearing without changing the range much. If you have more range and feel comfortable in your shoulders, you can lift your uh, hips higher. But just know that if you lift your hips very high, it's changing the range of motion in your shoulders. So just be cognizant of that. Keep your biceps engaged and two more breaths here. Take a big inhale, big exhale. Now one last time. Okay, and you lower your hips to the ground. All right, come up to seated. Again, take several deep uh, and wide shoulder blade circles on your upper back. So shoulder circles in one direction, shoulder circles in the other direction. Okay, and that's option number one for tabletop. Option number two for tabletop, hands behind you. Uh, for, for, for this one, um, I'm going to say you can have your fingers like out to the sides or maybe a little bit back. Uh, and you'll see why in a second because we're going to go from plank to side plank. But um, ultimately, whatever, the, you, you can choose whichever uh, direction your fingers are pointing. But um, for, for, for this particular sequence, fingers out to the sides or fingers back a little. The tendency, especially if you're hyper flexible, is to lock out elbows. So I invite you to bend elbows and engage your biceps here. Keep your biceps engaged, draw your shoulder blades into the back, and lift your lungs up. And so this might feel like a lot like camel, it's like a seated camel. So your, your arms are up, in, uh, your heart's up in the air as your arms press down. And my hope is this feels like camel, not like we're sinking into locked out arms, but we're engaging into this expansive range of motion practice. So you press your hands down, lift your lungs up. You can either stay here, or if you'd like, you take your feet onto the floor and on inhale, you lift your hips up toward the ceiling as high as you'd like, and then exhale lower down to the floor. So this is shoulder work, shoulder range of motion, a slow flow. It's a slow movement of, of your shoulder joints as you lift your hips. So of course we're using hamstrings, glutes, low back here. Uh, I am a fan of those as well, but uh, mind's eye to the shoulders and keep the engagements in your shoulders. That's bicep engagement. Draw your shoulder blades into the back. As you slowly lift your hips on inhale and then slowly descend your hips on exhale. Let's do that twice more. Breath in. Exhale. And one last breath in. All right, exhale, come out of that. Come to cross-legged seat. Again, a couple big shoulder blade rolls in one direction. And shoulder blade rolls in the other direction. Okay, great. And then from here, we're going to do either forearm plank again or plank with hands on the floor with upward push-up position. All right, so hands are driving in through the floor, shoulders away from ears, biceps engaged. And you can either stay here in plank uh, if, you, if you have confidence in your shoulders to bend your knees like you're about to play leapfrog. Uh, as you, I usually inhale as I go back. So inhale. You bend your knees, knees hover just a millimeter off the floor, and then exhale back into plank position. So try that a few times. Inhale, bend your knees, set your hips way far back. Exhale as you come into plank. And if you'd like to go slower, but the breath, the pace of the breath isn't working, feel free to breathe more, but keep the pace slow. So if you have to double up on breath, inhale and exhale back. Inhale, exhale forward. Breathe more, move 
more slowly. Okay, very good. And then you can take your knees down to the floor. And from hands and knees, now this is a slight weight bearing. You can press your hands into the floor with a couple shoulder blade rolls in one direction. Make the biggest circles that you can on your upper back. And after several shoulder circles in one direction, change the direction of your circles. Okay, great. So from here, option number one, if, if uh, this was enough for your hands, option number one is a forearm plank, knees up or knees down, and if it's available, you would step your legs together and turn to the side. At this point, my bottom forearm would rotate a little, and I squeeze my shoulder blade in, turn my heart up toward the ceiling, and then I exhale, slowly come back into a forearm plank. I can turn either, and if, and if my knees are down, I turn, stack one knee on top of the other, rotate my forearm so that it goes widthwise across the mat, and you draw your shoulder blade in, turn your heart toward the ceiling in side plank. And then you can come back into forearm plank. So you can go back and forth like this, stack one leg on top of the other, and squeeze either feet on the floor or shoulder blades are on the floor. And if, uh, if that feels okay and you'd like to also do that on hands, from plank, you stack legs, press a hand down, reach your heart up, and then as you come back to plank, you center yourself, stack the other legs on top, and you rotate, and this is all, this is really all arm movement. But there's a little bit of a twist in the spine, that's why we prep the twists, but most of this work is slow movement with your shoulder joint and your shoulder blade. You can alternate between hands on the floor and forearms on the floor. Of course, if your abdominals, uh, your legs are getting tired, that's all a part of the planks. That's why they're, that's why they're in so many workout routines. Because it's pretty full body practice. But in terms of adding the yoga to it, to add the self-study, check to see how your shoulders are doing the whole time. Go back and forth like this. Another time or two. And then you come back into for, uh, forearm plank or hands on the floor plank. Take a deep breath in. All right, and then exhale, knees down to the floor. You can sit back a little bit if you need some shoulder, uh, some shoulder rotations, you can do that. Also wrist circles. Feel free to move your wrists around and then circles in one direction, circles in the other direction. All right, great, and then release, and let's come right foot forward. Have your block at the ready. We're gonna press, press your right foot into the floor, left leg is now back, here's our lunge. All right, so from the lunge, adjust your lunge so that you can take your hands to the block, both hands on block. And um, I'm demonstrating the block is in front of me, you can also go the block to the inside of the foot a little bit. Uh, but what I like about the front is you can really get the sense of balancing on your feet because eventually we may take our arms off the floor. Okay, so if this, if this feels off balance, just keep your, keep your block to the inside of the foot. Uh, but in preparation for our slow flow and lunge, have your hands on, have your, have your block in front of your front foot. So back leg is nice and straight, front knee, um, front knee presses forward a little and take a deep breath in and exhale from there. You can take your hands to the floor, switch sides, step your other foot up. And so left foot forward, 
right foot back, and the block and the block's either going to be in front of you. This winds up narrowing your base of support, so this may feel like more of a balance challenge. If it's too much of a challenge for the lunge, take your block to the inside of the foot that widens your base of support up front and may make it more sustainable. And breathe here into lower abs. And as you press your heel back, back leg straight, front knee goes forward a bit. And two more breaths here. Take a big inhale, big exhale. And one last time. Okay, great. And then you can press your hands into the block, switch back to the first side. Okay. And option number one, with, with, uh, if you're not gonna lift the block up, everyone can still take their hands to the side of the block, and it's like you're trying to crush the block. So I, you know, uh, I, I sometimes work this hard enough that I can actually get my arms to shake a little, so there you go, because you're never actually gonna crush the block. <laughs> So there's really no upper limit to how much uh, effort you can ex uh, extend uh, to the block. But from here, you gotta keep the block on the floor. Or for more of a balance challenge, you crush the block, squeeze the block in the heart center, and then on the count of five, crush the block forward. So like one, two, three, four, five, and you're squeezing the block all the way back. Two, three, four, five, let's do that twice more. One, two, drive your feet through the floor, crush the block forward, five, bring it back in, two, three, four, five, and one more time. One, two, three, four, five, bring it back in, two, three, four, you can place the block on the floor, hands on top of it, and switch legs. Right foot steps back. Bring your left foot forward however you need to. And option number one here is to press into the sides of the block with your hands and keep the block on the floor. So that's still some activation for biceps, shoulders. All right, if it's available, you're gonna lift the block to heart center, crushing it up toward the heart, squeeze it, and then as you inhale, send your arms forward on the count of five. One, two, three, four, five, and then crush the block on the way in. Two, three, four, five. Let's do that twice more. One, two, breathe a lot. Three, four, five, bring it back in. Two, three, four, five, and one last time. Inhale slightly deeper, exhale slightly deeper. Four, five, and bring it back in. Two, three, four, five. You can take the block to the floor, hands on the top of the mat, step back into downward facing dog. All right, hands through the floor. Sitting bones up toward the ceiling, inner legs lift up toward the ceiling. All right, so yeah, we're using the, the arms quite a lot for stability. Two more breaths here, take a big inhale, drive your hands straight down through the floor. And then you keep your hands pressing down, you're gonna bend your knees a little bit, and then with as much weight in your hands as you can afford to take, that means getting it toward a, a, a plank position, you're gonna then tiptoe yourself up, keeping as much weight in your hands as you can. All right, so you tiptoe up as far as uh, your hamstrings will allow, and then from here, grab your block again, and you're gonna squeeze the block as you come up to standing. So you're gonna bring the block to hard center, press your hips forward as you reach your arms above your head squeezing the block the whole time. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, you can bend your knees, sitting bones back, this is Sun Salutation A, with the addition of squeezing blocks. So as you forward fold, place the block in front of your mat again, plant your hands onto the floor. Take a deep breath in, instead of jumping back, add some weight onto hands, as much as you feel comfortable doing, and then you tiptoe back. So there's this slow, 
transition from a forward fold to plank. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, you can lower halfway down, or a part way down, tops of feet on the floor. Don't hit your head on the block if you're going all the way down. But you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades into the back, lift your lungs up toward heart center, and then take some time, maybe a count of five, to go from upward dog to downward facing dog, feeling the range of motion in the arms stable the whole time. Two, three, four, five. Now we're in downward facing dog. Take a couple breaths here. From here, you're gonna come into plank to get more weight into your hands, all right? And then from there, you tiptoe up. Tiptoe up, tiptoe up, tiptoe up, tiptoe up. When you land your feet on the floor, transfer weight into feet, take hold of your block, and crush your block as you come all the way up. Crush your block past heart, past face, above head, take a deep breath in. And then exhale from there, release, and you can put your block to the side for now. And take a breath or two in Mountain Pose, Tadasana. All right. Very good. And from here, right, and I'm going to mirror you again, right toes to the right, left foot steps back. This is side angle. We'll be taking forearm to our thigh. Uh, so this is less about the range of motion and more about uh, the balance and um, the activating side bodies. So you're going to press your back heel into the floor, exhale, slide your front knee forward, and then from here, forearm to right thigh, and your right arm can reach up toward the ceiling. Up to the ceiling, and then you take it overhead. All right. Now, the idea here is as you take uh, your arm overhead, you're pressing, it's like there's a phantom block in your hand, and you're gonna press overhead, not letting your arm go limp, but rather activating the range, like you're trying to crush the block overhead. Roll your belly up toward the ceiling, and breathe into your left side. Two more breaths here, take a big inhale, big exhale, and one last time, breath in, Okay, great. And then from here, you reach your top arm back behind you toward, the, toward your back foot, and you're gonna squeeze your side bodies to come up into a warrior two, shoulder blades away from ears. With the palms pressing down, it's like you're trying to press a block to the floor. And that doesn't mean your hands go down. It just means it's like they're on something and they're pressing down. So feel the activity through your arms, shoulder blades away from ears, face soft. And then from here, back hand, to the, back hand to the back leg, rotate your right arm up overhead into a revolved, uh, not a revolve, a side, uh, a side warrior, reverse warrior, and take your top arm up overhead as if you're pressing into that block. You pause there, breathe into your right side, deep breath in, and then exhale, you come into warrior two, pause here, Press down with your hands without actually moving your arms. So it's like there's like the top of a table here. You're trying to push down to help lift your lungs. Very good. Take a deep breath in. Okay, and then hands on to waist. Straighten your right leg. We'll pivot both legs so your left toes are pointing to the left. Take a deep breath in. Arms out to sides. And then exhale, bend your front knee. And you're going to take your forearm to thigh. Shoulder blade away from ears. Reach your top arm up toward the ceiling. Okay, you can turn your palm up overhead. That's external rotation, like we did earlier with the uh, myofascial releases. And then like you're pressing into the block, find those muscles you were using to crush the block and take your top arm up overhead. So the arm is going into a more extreme range of motion from a position of stability rather than muscles letting go. So it's more about the engagement in this, in this particular practice. And as you're pressing your top palm energetically into the block, breathe into your right side. Two more breaths here into side angle. Deep breath in. Big exhale. Take a deep breath in. Okay, and then from here, warrior two, you're gonna squeeze your right waist to come up like we did in a side, side plank. Palms in opposite directions, fingers in opposite directions. Engage your biceps, and it's like you're trying to push your hands down 
shoulder blades down, arms down to help lift your lungs. And take some deep breath here. So the arms are doing work they don't necessarily have to do. That's where the stability, that, that's where the stability comes into play. And then the reverse warrior, the side, the side angle the, the opposite way, take your back hand to the leg and you're gonna rotate now your left palm so that it faces up and overhead. And it's like you're trying to press the block overhead. So your arms coming from a position of stability and engagement. And from here, breathe into your left side another few times. Take a deep inhale. Take a big exhale. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. From here, come back to the warrior two. Press your palms down to lift your lungs up. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hands on two hips. Straighten legs. And you're going to turn both toes in. Next pose, wide leg forward fold. And you can keep this one fairly wide as long as it feels okay for your sacrum. You bend your knees a little bit, pubic bone slides back, hands down to the floor. If they're under shoulders, that's fine. Uh, if you are more flexible uh, in your dorsal line, in your back body, you can take your hands a little bit further in. Uh, they might be on the mat, so I'll, I'll like demonstrate on the mat, but you can totally keep them anywhere, uh, anywhere under your shoulders, like, uh, like your hands are sliding on train, uh, train, train trestles. So from there, draw your shoulder blades into the back. As you exhale, you can bend your elbows uh, toward the space in between your legs. The tendency is for the elbows to go out to the sides. Squeeze your elbows toward one another. Of course, they're not gonna touch, they're just drawing in a little bit. If you can draw them in half of an inch, you then help stabilize the shoulders. So elbows draw in a little bit, and then from there, you can bend your elbows through your legs. What happens if you're really tight in your back body is the hips slide back as well. So I encourage you to keep your elbows and hands where they are and shift your hips forward just like half an inch or three quarters of an inch. That should give you a lot more stretch on the back body. So calves, hamstrings, sacrum, low back. And then in and out through the nose. Deep breath here. Okay, great. And then you can slide your hands forward so that now your hands are, arms are straight, hands on your shoulders, bend your knees a little bit, heel toe yourself closer together so we can come back up with stability. And take your time on this, maybe on the count of five, hands on to hips, squeeze your shoulder blades, and with knees unlocked, you're gonna slide your glutes down, press your hips forward to come all the way up. And of course, if you have uh, some low blood pressure, you can also reach your arms up overhead. So the blood drains from your arms and not your head. And two breaths here, take a big inhale, big exhale, and one last time. Okay, great. And then from there, release. Grab your block, and we're going to be working with, it's, a, it's a, going to start as a lunge, just not as far. You're going to use your block as, a, uh, as an engagement experience. And from here, the lunge, you're going to come up here, and if available, so let, let's just do that a, a couple times. So notice how my lunge is not as far, uh, the feet are not as far away. So right foot forward, left foot back. Take your block um, to the uh, space in front of your toes. Once again, if that feels like a balance challenge, maybe you can start here. But since we're gonna come up, it's nice to kind of be in line. So you're gonna crush the block. And as you inhale, squeeze your low back and you're gonna crush the block to heart center. And then you're gonna lift the block up overhead. So just, once again, like on the count of a five, just slow movement, crushing the block the whole time. So then the block comes back to heart center, and then you forward fold, block goes down to the floor, and you can push into the block switch sides. This is not as far of a lunge. Your back heel is up, okay? So we're not in like pyramid, okay? And from here, you're gonna drive your feet through the floor, Crush the block, 
You're gonna squeeze the muscles of your back body, crush the block, squeeze the block to heart center. And then from here, you're gonna crush the block overhead. So two, three, four, five, and you bring it back in. Two, three, four, five, lower down. Two, three, four, five. Press into the block to switch sides. Crush the block, drive your feet through the floor in not as long of a lunge. One, bring it up to heart center on five. Lower back engages, shoulder blades engage. Five as you go up. Two, three, breathe a lot. Four, five, come back down. Two, three, four, five. And then you slowly lower block to floor, extend arms. Three, four, five, press into the block to switch. Okay, establish the lunge, feet take all the weight, no weight into the block, crush the block in and extend your spine. Two, three, four, five, lift the block up overhead. Two, three, four, five, lower down. Two, three, four, five, and then you take the block to four, two, extend arms, three, four, five, and take both feet up to standing. Take a break while I demonstrate the last thing we're gonna do as an option. That whole routine is option number one. Option number two, if you'd like to work on a balance challenge as well, you, you, uh, it starts the same, two, three, four, five, we're up here, and then from here, all the weight's on the front foot, and you press your front foot into the floor, Draw your other knee up toward chest as you take the block high. Three, four, five. And then from here, you lower the block down as you sweep your leg back, land in a short lunge. And then one, two, three, four, five, all the way to the floor. Okay, so I'll be demonstrating that, but if you want to just keep your feet where they are and not worry about the balance, just go ahead and do the first, the first variation. Okay, well, let's try it out. Um, so right foot's forward, block, you're gonna crush it with your hands by your sides, and let's all come up, uh, this, this stays the same, when you go one, two, bring the block to heart center and extend your spine toward five. If you'd like to, right foot through the floor and you draw your left knee up in the chest, with a Romanian deadlift, draw your knee in the chest, arms overhead, four, five, and then you bring the block back down as you sweep your leg back, back toes touch the floor in our short lunge, and then from there, block comes down. Let's do it one more time on this side before we switch. So you bring it back up, two, three, crushing the block, four, five, if you'd like to, right foot on the floor, Left knee up as you crush the block overhead. Four, five, bring the block back to heart center. Step your left foot back. Four, five, and then you lower it down. Two, three, four, five. Okay, switch sides, right foot back, left foot forward. You're gonna crush the block, drive both feet through the floor, and let's all come up, one, Two, crush the block to heart center. Four, five, you gotta just lift the block up overhead or weight shifts into left foot. Draw right knee into chest as you take the block overhead. Four, five, you bring the block back to heart center as you slide the foot, uh, right foot behind you, land in your lunge, and then you lower on the count of five, stable and steady through your entire range of motion, block touches the floor, and let's do that one more time. Crush the block in the heart center. Three, four, five. As an option, balance on left foot. Draw right knee in the chest. Everyone crushes block overhead. Four, five. Bring the block back to heart center. If you're balancing, back foot touches to the floor. Everyone's in lunge. And then on the count of five, two, three. Lower the block to the floor, extend arms. Move the block forward, take your hands down to the mat, step back into downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths here in downward facing dog. Now 
Okay, great. And then take your knees down and let's come around to seated. All right, have your block at the ready. And we'll start in Dandasana. All right, so you can drive your heels forward. Make sure that these, uh, especially for prone to hyperextension, make sure that the knees are unlocked. And I usually think of Dandasana as taking upper thighs into the floor rather than the back of the knees into the floor. So upper thighs down, that helps uh, engage the psoas and give a bit of an anterior tilt to your hips. So you're gonna lift your lungs up toward the ceiling. And then from here, uh, hands by your sides. You're gonna keep the lungs lifting and if possible, lift one heel uh, an inch or two off the floor. The tendency is gonna be for the tailbone to wanna to slide under, arch your back and lift your lungs. So a lot of quad psoas work. Uh, people often complain about their quad uh, cramping here. Sometimes mine do. Uh, so note that, take a break if you need it. And then you place that heel down, arch your back, lift your lungs as you take your other heel up an inch or two. Good, now keep on lifting lungs, twice more, breathe in, big exhale, and one last time, breathe in. Okay, great, and you lower the legs down. From here, please take your right foot flat to the floor, knee comes into chest, and you're gonna arch your back here, take a deep breath in, and exhale, rotate your belly to the right, past your thigh. You're now gonna take your right hand down to the floor, or, because I have a relatively long spine compared to my arm, I actually get better, um, better engagement with my hand on the block. So my right hand's on the block, my left arm reaches around the knee, and now you can use your arms, engage your biceps, draw your shoulder blades into the back, inhale as you lengthen, and then exhale, rotate your belly back. And you can use your arms to facilitate the twist. So all this work today uh, has, not all work, but like, the focus has been on the arms. And we can now actually apply what we've learned to help facilitate this twist. So you can press your back hand down. If your arm's long enough, press into the floor, but it feels like you're slumping, give yourself a break, give yourself some height, and give yourself some, uh, some leverage to use your arms uh, really well here to facilitate your twist. Breathe into your abdomen twice more. Inhale. Big exhale. And one last time, breath in. Okay, great. And then you can de-rotate, both legs extend forward. Lift your kidneys, lift your lungs, take a deep breath in. And then from there, bend your left knee, left foot in, comes in. I'm gonna turn around for demonstration purposes, but you don't have to. So your left knee is, uh, left knee is bent. You're gonna arch your back, lengthen, twist to the left. So your left arm's, your, your back arm, you press that into the floor, right arm hugs your knee in. So your, so your, both arms are a device to help your twist. So, and the block behind me gives me leverage to find the, this towering length of inhale. And then exhale, use your arms to facilitate the twist. You press your back hand into the block, hug your knee into chest, and then with this Big twist, your arms are doing the work, your spine is receiving the benefit, your organs are receiving the benefit. Breathe into your abdomen several times here. Okay, great. And then from there you de-rotate. You can place the block uh, to the side off your mat. Take a dandasana. Both legs extended, take a deep breath in, arch your back. And then upper thighs go into the floor. You can round your spine, hands to shins. Even hands to thighs, hands to shins. Uh, if you're able to, piece fingers around big toes. And so last, last uh, arm, arm practice today. You can, if your hands are on shins, regardless of where they are, hands on shins, toes otherwise, 
You can slide your elbows out to the sides, and that slides your shoulder blades out to the sides. It helps protract the shoulders. That gives you a more expansive stretch in your back body. If your fingers are around, uh, around your big toes, you can also, uh, it helps to engage your biceps and send the elbows out to the sides. Wing them out, send your shoulder blades out to the sides. It gives a more comprehensive stretch to the spine and the muscles along the back of your rib, uh, rib basket. And from here, breathe into your back body several times here. And one last time, breath in, big exhale, okay, great, and then you come up, lie on the back, grab your strap, and face up, we're going to take the strap around your right foot, this is Supta Pada 1, so strap around your right foot, right leg up in the air. All right, so yeah, back of leg stretch, calf stretch, spines on the ground, so the spine more or less gets to, to rest. And the arms, we're doing a little bit of work in the arms just to keep the leg up. Uh, but this, this arm position, like it's almost not work, and we could kind of hang off the arms a little. At like 5% effort though, engage your biceps, draw your shoulder blades into the back, and feel your arms work as a cohesive whole to keep your right leg up in the air. So it doesn't have to be the strong, you know, crushing, squeezing engagements uh, that we've done this whole practice. To turn this into postural work, or like our everyday living practices for the arms. Think 5% effort in your shoulder blades, 5% effort in your arms. Great. And then from there you can bend your right knee, switch, switch legs so your left foot is in, your, is in the strap, left heel up toward the ceiling, open toes. And the shoulder blades are away from your ears, so we're not hanging off of bones. The muscles are, the muscles are supporting bone structure, biceps gently engaged. Shoulders away from ears. So the heart's open. Your neck is relaxed. Jaw soft. Head's already in Shavasana. And another two breaths here. And then from here, take both feet into the strap and upward facing Dandasana, Supine Dandasana. Okay, if you'd like, you can take the elbows out to the sides a little bit, so the shoulder blades, there's some space between your shoulder blades. And breathe up and down the front side of your spine. Heels gently press up, open toes. Head feels weighted. We've done a lot of head up in the air practices today. So head feels heavy, base of skull feels relaxed and soft into, the, into your mat. Okay. Very nice. And you can release the strap, place the strap by your side, extend your legs forward into a Shavasana. So legs drop down into the floor to give ourselves a little bit of an arm adjustment. Uh, the, 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 you can move the skin. And so what I do is I, I give myself a bear hug. Arms come underneath armpits and grab the skin of your side ribs and see if you can pull the skin up toward the ceiling to stretch the skin on your back. So it's almost like the skin is taut. That is, uh, the skin that's on the floor is taut. And then from there, the rest of the skin can just sort of relax down. Shoulders away from ears. 
arms out to sides for a moment and just one time take both arms in the external rotation. That's your inhale. And then exhale without derotating, just relax your palms face up. Okay, and here's our Shavasana, our final relaxation. We did a lot of engagement work, strength building work in our shoulders. Now enjoy the ability for the shoulders to soften. And relax yourself away from any places in your body where there's a bit of a gripping, a bit of a holding. If you notice any place that's gripping, just allow it to ungrip, give it space. So common areas are thighs, glutes, abdominals. And particular to our practice, the shoulders, tops of shoulders, relax the tops of shoulders. Where your shoulders meet your neck, the inward curve. Allow the inward curve of your neck to soften toward the floor. Neck is heavy. Ears soft, eyes soft. Notice of any thoughts that come uh, into your awareness. Notice if the generation of thoughts is also flowing at a slower pace. So it's almost like we've put on the brakes on the brain. It's not like we'll ever be completely free of new thoughts. It's not really like a light switch, but it can be like a dimmer switch. So if your brain arises with a thought, just give the thought some space. No need to rush through and kick it away. Just allow the thought to slowly dissipate. and re-relax your awareness. Do this for the next two minutes. Very good. So from here, guide your awareness to your breathing. Notice your breath. And then start taking some deeper inhales and exhales. Inviting the breath to swirl around torso. And 
Breathe through your hips, down your legs, as if you're breathing into your feet. Breathe through your shoulders, down your arms, as if you're breathing into your palms. And finally, breathe into your brain, dust off your brain. And exhale down your face. All right, great. And from here, please hug both knees at once into your chest. Give your knees a good hug. And if you'd like, you can slowly rock from one side to another. Some people also rock up and down on their spine uh, as well. But you can really slow down the movement from side to side. So there's a little bit of weight in one low back, a little bit of weight in the other low back. And then from here, you can choose a side to roll onto. Roll to one side. And curl up in a ball, take a deep breath. And exhale. And you can make your way up to a comfortable seated position. So yeah, upright. Very gently draw muscles in low back in so the lungs feel light. And feel the weight of the arms. The arms feel heavy, so the inward curve of your neck uh, is as little tension as possible in your neck. All right. Very good. So I thank you for practicing uh, vigorously with me today. That was a lot of good work. Thank you for, thank you for watching and practicing with me. Take care. Namaste.